Hello everyone, this is Davide Sorella, I am a marine biologist and I work at Aqua Biode Group as an aquaculture consultant and today we are going to discuss about RAS infrastructure maintenance and troubleshooting. So this presentation is divided in two parts. The first part is about technical description, maintenance and troubleshooting for mechanical filters, especially drum filter, protein skimmer and UV unit. The second part is about technical description, maintenance and troubleshooting about biofilter, pump and compressor, tank, pipes and airlocks, blower and heater. So before talking about uh, recirculating aquaculture system infrastructure description, maintenance and troubleshooting is important to have a general idea of what recirculating aquaculture systems are. So basically these are systems where water is recirculated and in which uh, a low percentage of water is exchanged on average it is about 10 percent but it can vary from 20 percent going down to one percent other parameters are controlled in recirculating system it's a recirculating aquaculture system such as oxygen or other metabolites such as waste the ammonia which can be toxic for fish and also it's important to have a control over environmental parameters such as light and temperature to allow species in this case can be fish algae or mollusk of other kind of species to grow in the optimal conditions this picture shows a graphical representation of all the pieces of equipment present in a recirculating aquaculture system starting from the sump where clean water is uh, a pump brings from uh, through this branch water through the saturation cone uh, here also we have the ozone venturi uh, to the protein skimmer and then back to the clean sump. Another branch from here goes through the UV unit to the filter. Uh, in this case can be a canister, but there are, but there are other kinds of filters. Then through the heat pump back to the fish tank. And from the fish tank the outflow is passing through the drum filter and it goes finally into the biofilter and from here back to the sump. Solid waste can harm fish health because, for example, they can damage fish gills or also reduce considerably the availability of oxygen dissolved into the water. For this reason, mechanical filters can be employed. And here we are talking about settable solids with a diameter larger than 100 micron. Generally, we talk about settable solids for solids which in uh, under steel conditions uh, they settle in about one hour uh, so they can be removed using a sedimentation tank or mechanical filters such as drum belt sand disc filters or also swill separator this slide shows different types of mechanical filtration we have the drum filter which has a mesh inside, as you can see from the picture, and all the water passes through the inlet, passing through the inlet, passes through the mesh. So all the debris are basically remain attached to the mesh, and they are then sprayed away with a water jet, which is released from this bar on top, which is a, a spray bar with nozzles. So all the clean water can pass through the, through the outflow, and we also have in the drum filter a level sensor which is activated when the mesh basically is clogged with, uh, with debris and so the water level increases and activate the level sensor. Then we have a disc filter on the top right which has the same principle of drum filter but the mesh is organized in discs as you can see and the surface of filtration is higher. Then we have a sand filter in which different type of types of media are utilized and then belt filter where we have part of the belt inside the water and part outside. And so by rolling the belt can remove the, the solids which are uh, uh, settling in the water column. Three main routinely operations for drum filter maintenance include nozzle check, match check, and level sensor cleaning. Nozzle shall be routinely checked for blockage. 
So the first thing to do to carry out the nodal check is to remove the drum filter lid. Once done it, remember to hook a magnet where the lid stays to deceive the emergency system which prevent the drum filter from working. Manually test the drum filter backwash by pressing the red button and check if the water spray is strong and sharp. If spray seems blocked or deviated, nodal should be cleaned or replaced. Turn off the drum filter by switching off the pump and power buttons from the control panel. Then unscrew the nozzle bar and remove it. Usually a quick brush and a rinse with ethanol 70% will remove a blockage. So use a spray with ethanol and then clean it with some paper or a towel. If necessary, use a brush to remove incrustation from the nozzles. In case of further blockage, soak them in vinegar for two or three hours and remove any residues with a soft wire brush. Use a needle of a thin metallic wire to unlock the hole and then ensure that all the nozzles are oriented in the same direction so that they are parallel and use a caliper to adjust them. Now place the nozzle bar back in the, in the drum filter, screw it gently and ensure that the bar is perpendicular to the mesh. Remember to activate the drum filter by pressing the power and pump buttons and finally check that the nozzle spray works appropriately. To check the mesh, turn off the pump but remember to leave the drum filter button on and then ensure the mesh is well placed under the jubilee clips at both edges of the drum and inspect all the surface to ensure there are no holes. The mesh should be fixed, changed in case of damage, which can, which can compromise its operation. If the hole is relatively small, it's possible to fill it up with food grade silicone glue. In case of larger damage, the mesh needs to be replaced. The level sensor can be covered with algae or dirty debris. To clean it, remove the sensor by twisting the pipe where it's contained and pull it out. Then to clean the pipe containing the level sensor, unscrew it, lock the water coming out with some paper. Then spray the sensor with alcohol and clean it accurately with paper. Now clean the level sensor pipe by first spraying it with alcohol and then by using a brush. Finally, rinse the level sensor pipe by cleaning it with clean water. Now put the level sensor back in the pipe, remove the paper locking the water coming out of the drum filter and place the level sensor pipe back by screwing it. Check that the sensor is placed correctly and is activated at the right level of water. For a general check of the motor, place attention to any unusual noise or extreme vibration when you activate the drum filter and, if the models allow it, every six months apply the foot grid grease to the shaft and screws of the motor to prevent rusting. In case the backwashing does not turn on automatically, it can be possibly a fault on the backwash pump. So, press the test button and check if the backwash pump turns on. If not, check the switch on the control panel where there is this drip pad. Check there is power in the pump by using a multimeter. In case there is no power, check the wiring. After correct wiring, there is still no power, change the capacitor. In case there is no sufficient spraying on the spray bar, the nozzles might be blocked. So remove the spray bar and clean it with the wire brush. Another possible cause is that there is not enough pressure from the backwash pump. So, read the pressure reading on the pressure gauge, their value should be around 4. In case the pressure is lower, disconnect the backwash pump and test it on maintenance web desk. In case the drum is not turning, a possible cause is the cogwheel might be blocked. So, check if the movement of the cogwheel is not obstructed, remove any obstacle from the teeth. Another possible cause is that the fuse is blown, so check the fuse and replace it if necessary. Another possible cause might be a faulty of the motor. So use the multimeter to check whether the motor received power from the supply. The motor might require to be replaced. Disconnect all the wires before you dismount the motor. The function of the protein skimmer is to remove fine and dissolved solids with a diameter between 0.1 and 30 micron from the water. 
These solids can contribute to up to 50% of the total suspended solid in a system, and they can increase the irritation of the gills and damage to the fish, and also reduce the availability of oxygen in the water. Another function of the protein skimmer is to facilitate the CO2 stripping, so removal of the CO2. Water enters from the top of the protein skimmer through the inlet, as we can see here, passed through the water column, where we have this uh, bio ring like uh, media, which function is basically to increase the surface contact of water with hair, and so to promote the exchange of oxygen, so to increase the oxygen content, and to reduce the CO2 concentration of the water. Uh, now, all the, let's say, proteic particles, debris, which are contained in the water, through a process called flocculation, collapse each other and can be removed as a form of foam. This foam then is pried away through the, uh, this pry bar, which is activated by a timer. A timer. The protein skimmer shall have a laminar flow. Make sure that the phone collector box is slightly sloping downwards and set the flow in a way that it does not overflow from the box. Then open the lid and check if the water level is in a coral level and not spilling over the box, otherwise it will lose water. The spray nozzles shall be routinely checked and clean if necessary. The spraying should be even and be able to remove the foam. Protein skimmer media should be routinely checked. To do so, close the inlet pipe valve going to the protein skimmer to stop the flow. Then unscrew the protein skimmer top and remove it. Now pour the media into a large bucket and wash them to remove any deposit material. If power washing is not sufficient, soak them into vinegar for a couple of hours. If the media clogs, the foam production will decrease. So simply take out the media and clean it. Remember that the foam cap should be cleaned once a week. The actuated valve is set up for removing the foam from the collector box into the drainage. The valve is normally closed and opens in a cycle which can be calibrated. The time span of spraying can also be modified, however, keep it idly between 5 and 10 seconds. To change the spraying time span, keep pressing the set button until it switches to on. Then move the digit you want to change by the mill middle button, change the number by the third arrow up button, and finally press the set again to save the modification. To change the cycle, keep pressing the set button until it switches to on, press the set again, move the digit by the right arrow button to the digit you want to change, change the number by the arrow up button, and finally set again to save the modifications. Ultraviolet disinfection units are used to disinfect water from different kind of pathogens, especially the ultraviolet units, they allow efficient DNA inactivation regarding, in this case, biological organisms such as bacteria, viruses and also protozoas. Target pathogens are usually one-celled organisms and uh, this system, this device, generally is, works especially with uh, relatively clear water and the material is uh, non-corrosive propylene, the external pipe, whether we have inside a in, uh, quartz sleeve wipe. The reaction configuration, of course, can be of uh, different shapes, U, L and Z shapes. To clean the quartz sleeve, open the bypass valve and close the inlet and outlet valves. Then switch off the unit on the distribution board. Remove the protection caps, pull the UV light out, unscrew the compression nut and remove the quartz leaf. Then sprite it with alcohol and wipe it. If calcium deposit is observed, then soak it in vinegar for two or three hours and then rinse it.
After that, dry inside the quartz slip by guiding through some blue paper with a piece of clean pipe. Then place back the quartz slip in the unit by using a pole to help to insert, to help to insert it back. Tighten the compression nut by hand, but do not over tighten because it can break the quartz leaf. Place back the UV bulb and connect the cap back. UV lamp must be replaced after one year of usage. If the usage of light exceeds 9000 hours, so one year and one week, the disinfection performance of the UV can be affected. If the UV is not working, a possible cause may be a loose connection on the cap. So wobble the blue caps as sometimes the connection gets loose. Faulty wire might be another possible cause, so check the wires for power with the multimeter. If the UV light has low intensity, a possible cause might be the solarization as the UV lamp loses the intensity over time. So check the lifespan of the UV light on the display. If the UV light has low intensity, a possible cause might be the solarization as the UV lamp loses the intensity over time. So check on the lifespan on the UV light on the display. Isolate the UV and clean the quartz sleeve according to the corresponding procedure. Another possible cause is faulty on the UV sensor. Then it is recommended to recalibrate the sensor every two years.